And then a uh, couple of other reports. First of all, our student success report tonight will be our dental hygiene program. So if you guys want to come up and uh, uh, go ahead and get started, I'll turn it over to Dr. O'Brien to uh, introduce our dental hygiene faculty. So uh, it is my pleasure to welcome the dental hygiene faculty and an alumni of the program uh, who is here to speak with us tonight. Um, at your place, you do have a copy of the presentation. Um, you have a copy of the top 10 uh, campaign, which they're featured in this upcoming month. And also you have a quick fact sheet on the program just as a takeaway. Um, and I, I don't want to steal their thunder, but just to set you up for how um, how impactful this program is. You know, to date, our dental hygiene clinic has seen over 15,000 patients uh, since it's opened. And so this is an uh, amazing time for them to brag a bit. So I'm gonna turn it over to Sue Nearsheimer, uh, department chair. She's with Kim Eichley, faculty member, Mary Jacobs, faculty member, and Fiona, our alumni. So thanks so much. Thank you. Um, it's an honor to be here. Thank you so very much. We always love talking about our dental hygiene program, so this is just wonderful for us. Um, so you've already introduced them, so I will just move on. <laughs> so this is, um, uh, actually, uh, we have a newer version, but that's okay. Um, so we were asked to tell you what we feel, something that we feel makes us unique. And something that makes us unique, actually, across the whole dental field is our sustainability efforts that we do in our program. So we just wanted to tell you a little bit about that tonight. Um, so we feel it has a three-pronged, we have a three-pronged philosophy, let's say, towards sustainability. It's not just about recycling, it's not just about the environment. It's actually about the profession of the society as well. So we're going to describe a little bit of each one of those and how we incorporate that into our whole educational <coughs> curriculum and our philosophy. So like I said, um, it's not about just about recycling. So I'm going to talk to you about the environmental aspect and then the others will talk about the other two areas. So well, we've done several things, several things over the last few years that we're excited about. And through, through our many efforts, we have reduced our solid, chemical, and energy waste a great deal. It's, it's, it's the little tiny efforts that actually come together to make a huge difference. And that's what we feel that we've done. So just, I'm just gonna tell you about just a few of the things that we've done, and then I'll pass this on to Kim, and she'll tell you about our professional aspect of our philosophy. But um, we use a washer and dryer. We don't wear a lab coat and throw it in the trash anymore. That's been done for years and years and years. But we started thinking about this about five years ago. We go through 32 lab coats a day. Spread out over five days of clinic, that's 160 lab coats a week. And, we, and, and we're a summer program, so it's not just the academic year, it's the summer as well. So that's a lot of lab coats and garbage. We don't do that anymore. We laundry them, we hang them up, and we, we wear them. That tiny little thing made quite a big difference. Also, we are all digital in our radiography now, so we don't have the packets that we throw away, we don't have the chemicals for processing anymore, that's all gone. It's all digital. We have moved to electronic patient files and charting, which is just taking out a whole lot of paper waste. We, um, we're eliminating right now clinic grade forms, we're gonna go to an online version for clinic grading, which we're really excited about, that's our next step. One of the neatest things that we do though, the picture on the left that I just love, is we turn off the lights in the clinic when we work. I don't know of any other place that does that. Uh, we turn them off, and if you think about it, eight hours a day, five days a week of fluorescent <coughs> lighting that we don't use, it's quite, a, quite an energy savings actually. But um, we do have the, the three little lights in the center over the round table in the center, and it just gives a nice glow. So what that does, not only helps with all the energy, it um, also creates a very spa-like atmosphere. So, I know, let's be honest, it's a little stressful being in the dental chair, and this really just calms a lot of the nerves. So, um, the other thing that we do for environmental is we teach every class why we do it. So hopefully they'll take it on into the future, which is what sustainability is all about. And lastly, about that, I just want to say that none of these efforts could have been done without the help of the college and the support of the administration, and we just appreciate it so very much. So thank you for that. So turn it over to Kim. 
Um, I, as a program dental hygiene profession, um, we think it's important to help maintain the future integrity of our profession. So we believe it's very important to model professionalism and work that work work ethic. And um, we believe advance it. <laughs> Um, we believe it's important for the students to be a member of their professional organization, so we do require that they are a member. Um, this organization provides uh, professional <coughs> journals to the student continuing education to um, help them with lifelong learning and employment, employment assistance once they graduate. Um, the organization also helps to advocate for, profession, for the profession by promoting the increased availability of oral health care to the underserved, along with allowing dental hygienists to practice to their full potential. Um, professional conduct, we feel, is very important, so we strive to help the students to build relationships with each other so that they're working as a team um, and conducting themselves in a professional manner. Uh, ethical treatment is important for each patient and assessing their individual needs. We have the students uh, fill out self-assessments after every patient treatment to assess that they have been ethically treating their patient. And lastly, we feel it's very important for self-care and ergonomics. The dental professional has an increased risk of musculoskeletal disorders because of the position that we're in. So within that first semester, we do stress the importance of positioning and working in an ergonomic manner. Um, bringing our professional profession forward and sustaining our profession is our students. And in a couple of minutes, we'll have um, one of our past graduates speak, and she's an excellent representation of our professional sustainability. So my, my role is just to introduce to you an aspect of um, really the social justice piece in, um, in the idea of sustainability in our program. Really it's a teaching philosophy, a pedagogical tool we might say, or a teaching tool that we use. So uh, community service learning is embedded into the curriculum in such a way that um, students gain a responsive aspect. So how am I going to respond to my major role in society? So we've embedded three aspects into our um, curriculum. And the first one is really just obviously our clinic. Um, this really takes uh, student learning and it couples it with the needs of the community. So in 2017, CLC students treated over just 1,500 people. Um, they served many of our most vulnerable populations, um, 73 children, some of who attend our child care at CLC, 718 from the geriatric <coughs> population, and 397 from special needs groups. Um, students also have a variety of outreach experiences in our community dentistry course, and that's another way that we um, incorporate some of these social justice concepts. We go into the schools, long-term facilities, and then also um, really in environments where special needs groups are um, treated and, and taught. Um, our annual service trip tends to be our capstone for our um, social justice piece. And so this year we went on our ninth expedition, which was RAM's 900th expedition. So the students really get a great idea of what it looks like to um, run a sustainable public health um, operation or system, if you will. The last few years we've been able to um, take along a few of our nursing faculty and students as well. Um, and they're actually bringing that forward and going on their own special little mini trip at the end of this week in rural Tennessee. So you can check out that website if you like. Um, so there's volunteers from all over the country kind of give you an idea of what the mobile unit looks like. This one in particular is in Knoxville and Armory and Jacob's Armory. Um, the students did almost, um, I think it was 200 cleanings and assisted with more extractions than we'd like to say, so 2,135 extractions and 615 fillings. Here's a picture of, uh, we have our, our dental hygiene program attendees and then we also have our, our nursing students as well. So this was after a long 
a couple of days, so we, we don't look as good as we usually look. <laughs> <laughs> but really, one thing that I've witnessed over and over again when you incorporate this type of curricular approach um, is that it changes the students' uh, learning environments, and oftentimes it changes their decisions, their professional decisions, and how they see their future roles in society. So that's why we brought Fiona with us. Uh, because she just is going to share to, with you um, those aspects. What were the aspects in our program um, that have affected her professional growth? Mm -hmm. okay. So good evening, everyone. <laughs> so just a little bit about my background. Um, I grew up in Jamaica in a small rural village where not often you hear the talks about oral health or among the people in my community. However, when I was 10 years old, I had this um, amazing experience where this dental mission trip came to my village. And um, this was my first dental experience. And I was you know, excited and intrigued about these people talking to me about what oral health is and um, how important it is to take care of your teeth. And I think from that moment, I was a little girl, I said I wanted to travel the world. I had this big dream to take care of people's teeth and you know, help them better access to care. So fast forward, and a few years later, I moved to the United States, and I was accepted in the dental hygiene program here at CLC. And this is when I, um, during the program, I started to understand how social injustice really prevails worldwide. And as you know, this um, state was talked about the RAM trip, the service learning that we went on in my second year. That was my experience um, going to RAM, and you know, for this remote year in Tennessee reminded me. It kind of reopened my eyes as a little girl in the village who wanted to assure that everyone had access to good oral care. And so I just wanted to be more than someone who just cleans people's feet. I wanted to be an advocate for oral health, especially for those people, you know, who are underserved. Um, and through this program, you know, through this program, I learned the importance of giving back to my community and that everyone deserves, you know, her time and her energy. And so one of the things that I've learned during the program was there's a need for social justice for people that are less fortunate. and. My skills that I've learned from my hygiene program has kind of helped guide my career. And right now I have to say that I am very devoted to working in public health dentistry with a population where there's a lack of knowledge about oral care and then there's a lack of professional support. So thank you.
Yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting. We had a little bit of a, a smaller class size um, for a few years, and we kind of took credit for that because we, we really did think that at some point we were saturating the market a little bit. We looked back at those years, so it was actually sort of a blessing in disguise that we had that smaller group because then they were able to find a plan. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. One thing I'll say, and they didn't say this in the presentation, and, and I hope I'm not going to uh, be wrong, but uh, they've had 100% pass rates. Is that for right? A pretty long time. Or just about forever. <laughs> I'm going to go with forever. <laughs> forever. Yeah, and, and so they, they run a fantastic program. So thank, thank you. you so much for your, uh, for your good work. Well, thank you. It's actually about teamwork. I yeah. mean, this is how we roll, right? Yeah. Except, you know, I've got to say, Jan and Joni, I did not expect them to show up. You're a clinical coordinator, our clinical yeah. office assistant, and they showed up in their scrub straight from clinic. So, <laughs> amazing. Thank so, you for showing up.